Hello, hello friends and welcome to another video. You probably already know from the title of this video, but today I'm going to do a little bit of a Q&A and I seriously just love filming these. I don't know why. I feel like some people hate filming them. I happen to love it. So how I always do these is I just ask on my Instagram story for you guys to ask me any questions that you have. This time I said don't make them like super one individual because I can't give individual advice if I don't know you and know your body. Um, but also I asked you guys to make them fun questions because in my opinion the more fun the questions are the more fun all of this is going to be. And I got a lot of questions so I'm just going to go through and answer the ones that I think are fun um, and entertaining and we'll see how far we get. I don't want this to be super long but let's start at the beginning. Tell us about the worst date you've ever been on. I think I've covered this in another Q&A. Maybe it was on someone else's channel though. Um, I was asked on a date by a guy who I met at Starbucks, um, which I used to go work at Starbucks all the time. And I was like, he seems like a nice guy. He had a really cool job. He was just nice, whatever. So I go to meet him and we met at like a wine bar and literally right away, he like had his hands like all over me like just like all over my legs my arms and I'm not someone who like I'm a touchy person but it was just like really weird and like all of a sudden like right off the bat he was talking about meeting his family going on all these trips together me like meeting all his friends and I was like I don't even know if I like you yet but yeah that we didn't talk again after that what color spray tan do you get when you go light medium or dark so my favorite is getting an airbrush which that's all one color where I go but if I go to eye tan which is where I go most of the time just because it's super close I get dark with the tint island kissed and then accelerator which just means that it absorbs in your skin faster because I just am impatient I'm like make me tan already do I miss intuitive eating honestly some days yes I think there's a lot of freedom that comes with it and I think also it was nice to like go about my day and not be planning my day around food um, but I do think that I learned so much from intuitive eating and right now I'm like so focused on my goals of like bringing a totally different package next time I get on stage that tracking macros is a means to an end right so while sometimes I miss that freedom um, and just not having to like think about food um, it it's never like, oh, I wish I was intuitively eating right now because otherwise I would, you know? Like, I don't track macros because I have to. I track macros because I am choosing to. But I think through intuitive eating, I learned how to balance tracking so much better too. So so that in and of itself was, I think, a really, really good thing for me to do. Um, favorite fitness apparel. Love my rider wear. It's the rider wear bra if you can't see that. Um, I wear, like, all my sports bras are from there. Pretty much all my shorts are from there. Um, Lululemon, obviously, and Buff Bunny Collection. I love all their stuff too. They just had a launch. Some stuff might still be in stock. So if you use code Lexi, it does support me. And every launch, they just outdo themselves. It's insane. Favorite fall activity. I love this because it's actually September 2nd. So it's kind of fall. Everyone's posting on Instagram about it being fall. And I'm like, I live in San Diego. It's like 80 degrees right now. But we don't really have seasons here, so it's not like you can do a ton of fall stuff. But as a kid, I loved going apple picking. And then you'd have like the apple cider and the donuts, and you'd pick like bags and bags of apples. But here I'll just be like making pumpkin spice everything. Okay, kind of along the same lines. Favorite pie flavor? I've always been a pumpkin pie person. I really like like most desserts. But I've always been a pumpkin pie person. When I was a kid, my mom, after Thanksgiving, would make like just the inside of a pumpkin pie. Um, Cause I would always like scoop it out of the crust. I was so weird. Um, but I would literally eat that for breakfast. I kid you not. What is your favorite thing to do in San Diego? As of recently, it has been going to the beach, something I didn't do for so long. It's like when you live somewhere, you like take everything for granted. And I'm always working and whatever, but um, it's something I really, really made an effort to do, and there's, I never feel more free than when I'm in the ocean. Like, every worry I have just goes away. Um, so doing that and then going to see the sunset, too. It's beautiful here. 
how do you tackle eating in a way that's right for you when your roommate doesn't share the same goals? So obviously Melissa is prepping right now. I am bulking. Um, and honestly, I remember a time, I feel like this was mostly in my eating disorder where I was so concerned about what everyone else was doing. I remember it would even bother me if like my mom was eating a salad and I like couldn't have a salad because I was trying to gain weight. Oh my God, there's a really big bug. <laughs> and honestly, I look back and I'm like, what the f but I'm doing what's right for me because I want to do it, right? Melissa's dieting because she has a goal. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's like she's talking about all her new low weigh-ins and I'm like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, my goals are mine. You know, like I'm getting so much stronger. I'm building my best physique for next season. So, so yeah, I just kind of do it. Um, and I understand that it's hard to do it without judgment or without comparing yourself to other people. And I know that's something I even have clients um, that struggle with just in terms of like, all my friends are always like dieting and I have to eat so much and I'm self-conscious. And it's like, well, you don't have to do what you're doing, number one. Um, and number two, I'm assuming you're doing it because you have goals. You just have to keep those at the forefront of your mind. And I think also realizing that like, there's so much more to you than if you're bulking or cutting or what your body looks like um, or how you eat or whatever. Like all of that's always like the least interesting shit about you. How did you discover you have celiac disease? I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 11 and both type 1 diabetes and celiac are autoimmune diseases. So um, I always had to get blood tests for my type 1 diabetes and it came back positive for celiac like a few times, I got retested because I was like, there's no way, I didn't have horrible stomach issues or anything. Um, and then I went and got a biopsy at a hospital to like stick something, you know, whatever. Um, and that came back positive. And so when I started eating gluten-free, I grew like four inches in a year or something crazy like that. Um, and like my skin just looked brighter, like it was like, okay, that was an issue. And I just like didn't even realize it was before. Which leg do you put your pants on first? That is a good question. Yeah, definitely my right leg. Vodka or tequila? Tequila. Always. I'm way more fun with tequila. Are you still going to school? No, I am not right now. I'm not opposed to going back. I love being a student. Um, but right now I have a lot of mentors in seven different areas. Um, of my life. I do a lot of my own research. I'm really focused on my business, which takes a lot, a lot of time. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, but I'm not like close-minded to going back to school eventually. Love life. Every Q&A without fail. Still non-existent. I think a lot of people get so confused because I always have a lot of like guys on my Instagram stories and whatever, but I honestly just have a lot of guy friends. Um, I find that it's just like so much less drama. It's a good time. Do you ever want pets someday? Yes, I 1000% want a puppy. Right now, I just feel like it wouldn't be fair. One, I live in a decently small, it's like a two bed, two bath apartment. Um, two, I am gone a lot. I mean, I just feel like that wouldn't be fair with where I'm at in my life, but I 1000% want a dog. Accuracy of fitness watches and how to not get caught up in like calories burned during a workout. So I do have an Apple watch. I haven't always worn one um, just because it's not accurate. Like everyone's body is different. The amount of calories you burn even during a workout depend on so much more than like your heart rate and even like the weight and height you put in there. Um, a lot of it is like the amount of muscle mass you have, like your cardiovascular endurance, all of that kind of stuff. So it's not super accurate. And I think if you're getting caught up in that stuff, don't wear it or like turn that setting off if you can. Like a lot of, I get asked that all the time, like how to not get caught up in like my daily steps or whatever. Um, and I wear my watch mostly for my diabetes because with my Dexcom it shows up on here um, versus having it over my phone. And also when I work, I put my phone across the room so I can be 100% focused on what I'm doing. But then I'll get a bunch of texts and I like won't even see them because they'll come through on my phone that I don't have on me and then I suck at responding to texts. So that's the main reason I have it. Sometimes I track my workout, sometimes I don't, but like it's gonna vary so much day to day and measuring if you had a good workout based on the calories you burn is like super, it just doesn't make sense. Cause that's not what you're aiming for with lifting anyways. 
What would you do if you liked someone that ran every day but never lifted? One, I'd probably make them try lifting with me. Um, but two, I would be like, fuck yeah, go run. As long as they support me, I don't care. Like, I don't think I could date someone who was like lazy and sat around all day. Just because I feel like exercising is part of just like being an overall healthy, driven person. Um, and I'm not attracted to people who are lazy as fuck. But they don't need to be like a bodybuilder, you know? So, that's my two cents. Biggest lesson you learned by overcoming your eating disorder. This is a good one. I've learned so much through that journey, but I think... The biggest thing is that we aren't like a victim to our mind. We're not a victim to our thoughts And I think I spent a lot of time um, and if you guys have ever struggled with like a Addiction or eating disorder you probably know like thoughts seem so real and like you give into an urge whether it's like to restrict or purge or drink at whatever it might be um, And it's like well the thought was just so strong it's like well you're still the freaking person choosing to do that right like you're still choosing to not hit your macros or over exercise or purge like we take so much strength away from ourselves and so I think for me that's like one huge lesson I learned um, it's just thoughts are just thoughts and like we still get to choose how we act it also is like one of the harder things I've overcome in my life um, so it's it's just empowering like yo I can freaking do anything I'm a boss ass bitch would you ever get a belly button ring I actually had one wait I still have like a little hole honestly I really liked it when I had it but mine like wouldn't come out so the second it like loosened I took that thing out I like these weird urges so I get my belly button or my nose but that's just like the impulsive side of me and I think like what I want like five ten years like I don't really want my belly button pierced not that you can't take it out but I just like I'm not inclined to go get it pierced how are you feeling about the new boobs are you getting used to them I love them I think they're finally like soft um like they are starting to feel much more like normal boobs as I grab them um but yeah they just they honestly feel like they're mine I feel like I've had them all along um sometimes I can like feel the implant move if I do something like really weird but um like they honestly just feel like mine and I think the inflammation all over my body it really did take like eight weeks to like fully go away it was way better after like a couple weeks but um I'm starting to feel finally like less watery and stuff so love them so 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 much did you ever relapse during recovery from your eating disorder so many times I went to treatment I don't think people know this my I was like started my eating disorder when I was like 16 years old and I was in and out of treatment all the way through I, when I was like 20 and from there like I was zero percent perfect right like there was still stuff I struggled with in terms of like eating foods that were challenging and like I did binge and purge a couple times after I told myself like I'm done I'm gonna stop you know and I, it's definitely not a straight line but I think I never like fell off it was always kind of like I slipped up and I got back on you know um so definitely for the first like year or so next one are you on dating apps i'm on hinge and bumble have i opened them maybe like once or twice in a year i don't know it just freaks me out one i've gotten messages from people showing like dating profiles of other people who've like used my pictures so i'm like that's creepy but i think more so for me like i'm happy where i'm at right now and like i do feel like i'm finally ready for a relationship if someone were to come along but the whole like dating app scene of like going on date after date after date after date i'm like i don't have the time for that and i don't want to make the time for that like i just i don't know maybe i'm just being a hopeless romantic in terms of being like oh i'm just gonna like meet someone when the time is right but i just don't like the idea of going on a shit ton of dates like i, I don't how did you and Melissa meet? So for those of you who don't know, Melissa is my roommate. We've lived together since March. But she came to San Diego um, for like a conference and we had the same coach. So she DM'd me and was like, hey, like I'd love to meet you. And I was on prep, I was like a few weeks out. So I like met her for lunch <laughs> and brought my own food. Um, and then we were talking about she was graduating from law school. And she was like, yeah, like I 
don't know like what of my like friends are gonna go or whatever and I was like I want to go and part of this was just me being like super trapped during prep like I just wanted to do everything but I also like we got along really really well so so I ended up going to her law school graduation and like to celebrate her birthday with her um and after that we were just like really really close and then she came to LA fit and we like hung out a bit then and then she was like I really want to move to San Diego and I was like let's make this shit happen and we did. What group or clique were you in in high school or college? Um, I wasn't. I wasn't in like that like popular group. Like I always like friends with those people, but I was like into sports and stuff like that. So I don't know. I was always just kind of like friends with a lot of people, if that makes sense. But I definitely wasn't like the popular kid. And then in college. Um, I don't I don't know like there wasn't really like clicks like that I guess I was just like friends with my friends and the girls in my sorority um, I was in Pi Phi um, and that was really really fun do you smoke weed at all if so how often I mean I have smoked weed I don't smoke it often though I, I'm like a control freak so I don't like that I can't control it like even drinking I'm like I can have a drink and be fine weed I just like don't know but obviously I have a lot of friends who do I have nothing against it it just no do I wax or shave which do I like better I've done both I obviously wax my eyebrows um I do get Brazilian waxes from time to time but honestly I stopped just because I get in like a good routine with shaving down there um and I hate waiting for it to grow out before you have to before you go back you know I'm like what no that's not an option in my life so I shave what's your favorite drink at the bar I usually get a tequila soda with muddled mint and lime it almost tastes like a less sweet margarita that's like at a bar drink like mixed drink of choice is a skinny margarita what's your ideal type of man I think the main things for me are being one someone who is humble um, someone who is extremely hardworking and like goal driven like I can think a guy is so hot and if they're just like oh yeah I just like work out or, or they're just like I'm just like chilling you know like that's so unattractive to me like I would rather you be super busy and not be able to pay that much attention to me because you're so busy doing shit um, than someone who is just like complacent um, so being driven um, and like motivated being humble I need someone who like makes me laugh and who's witty um, and I'm, I'm someone who I'm so independent um, that I like having someone who also is very like independent in a more like alpha way like I like feeling like someone has my back and they can take care of me even though I can take care of myself if that makes sense and then oh this is another good one okay so what is your Enneagram so an Enneagram it's kind of like this Myers-Briggs like 16 personalities but I'd say it's more of like a what is your soul test rather than just like your personality um so when I took it it gave me three it said I was a one two or three which two is the helper and that's the one I resonated most with um I have it pulled up right here but it says a two um is caring interpersonal type demonstrative generous people pleasing um very like giving and in tune with other people's emotions which I feel like I've talked about a lot on here it's something that it's like my biggest blessing it allows me to be so good at my job but it also like I will bend over backwards for other people at the expense of myself and then one and three I also see a lot in me um I think I'm mostly th a three which three is the achiever so I'm very success oriented adaptive excelling driven driven um, and then the downside of that is image conscious but if I were to say like what is your Enneagram I'm a two wing three is what I would say maybe a two wing one and three but mostly a two I think with definitely hints of especially three just like being an overachiever um, and being like very perfectionistic so that's that I'm gonna wrap this up let me know if you like this video um, if you guys want to comment more questions below I can like answer them throughout my next vlogs let me know what videos you guys want to see comment share like subscribe click the bell so you don't miss another video and I'll see you guys in the next one